On cafe, when you're attacking the top floor side, you can open a part of the wood of the cigar box. And from there you can get an angle onto the deep freezer. If there's any defender holding an angle from there, you can easily surprise them. When you're attacking the kitchen bomb site, I recommend trying to play Flores. Defenders usually stack a lot of utility like shields or azami barriers on a small area. You can easily get rid of it by driving your explosive drones through the drone holes. Take a look at my random teammate. He had a great idea to rappel upside down on this double door. After he opened the entire prep wall, some defenders constantly peek from the prep double window. The upside down rappel can easily surprise them. When defending cocktail bar, shoot those railings out. Now you have another option of moving between heaven and bar. In this situation, one attacker was holding an angle from the white window. I could hear him going back down to the ground and rappelling up again, but this time on the cocktail window. After he opened the barricade, I decided to jump out on him and kill him. Even though I died from a claymore, I think this is very beneficial for my team. Not only that I've changed 5v3 to 4v2, which is better, just like 3v1 is better than 4v2, but the most important thing is I eliminated an attacker holding a very strong angle, cutting off the entire freezer and half of the cocktail, where the most important rotations are. Therefore, I want you to know a trade is never equal. Sometimes it may not be worth it, but in this situation, four defenders with full floor control are stronger than five defenders split up into two separate areas. This time I end up in a 1v1 on defense. My situation is pretty good. I know my opponent is playing Thermite, I know his gadgets. I have camera on the red hallway, so I know if he's gonna push from there. Therefore I need to pay attention to the kitchen entry. I think he knows my position, he might be holding an angle on me, so I'm not exposing myself. The time is running out and he knows he won't be able to plant. He needs to go for the kill. I hear him sprinting through the kitchen and that's when I need to look at the timer. Ideally I'd like to hide and just win by the timer, but I'm predicting that he's able to get to me in that time. Therefore I need to go for the kill myself. Since he's sprinting it's not that difficult to kill him and I went around. If the timer was only 2 seconds shorter I would probably stay hidden and let the round finish. Whenever you wonder what to do, always look at the timer first. This should be the biggest factor in your decision making, whether you're an, on attack or defense. Now on Emerald Plains, when I'm defending kitchen and dining, I always need to do my favorite trick and that is opening the floor in vault. Attackers often immediately push to open the pantry wall and push into the side through pantry. As you can see, Ace has already opened the external wall and has no idea what's gonna happen. He jumps in, and he's gone. With Solace, apart from hunting drones in prep phase, you can try to look out for drones that are still outside. That gives a pretty good hint of where the attackers are coming from. If they leave a drone there, they probably want to enter the map in that area. As you can see, I spotted one drone earlier, and now I see two attackers on their phones on this side of the map. When I attack admin and office, I always try to pre-place the drone on the edge above the fox. This gives me a great view on the entire haunting hall. The same thing applies if you want to be looking at the gallery. Simply jump on the other side of the edge and drive up to the gallery. By the way, I've made videos about how I like to play on Emerald Plains. If you're interested, go check it out. The moment I got Villa I could not resist and I wanted to show you my favorite Amaru play and we started by preparing a drone outside the classical hall. I positioned myself by the 90 window and I used my drone to see if the corner is clear. Normally I would wait for teammates to do some distraction around study but I can already see Ace going for ruining the element of surprise so I go for the rush and instantly taking the 90 control allows me to breach the vault and overall I'm between roamers and the side so if they want to fall back I surprise them. In another round opponents are defending kitchen and dining. I picked up the diffuser because in the previous round a random teammate died with it on the other side of the map and my plan is to push upstairs and open the floor since the entire site has a soft ceiling. The key part is that none of my teammates want to 
push upstairs. It's tempting for me to go upstairs because I know it's a very beneficial position for us, but I realized I need to stay in touch with my teammates. Later I noticed they obtained the side control and so only because I didn't push upstairs on my own, I was able to join them in time and plant the diffuser and eventually China. win the round. Let's go. For comparison, I got Villa in the other game, and this time there was someone who pushed upstairs with me. This time I could fulfill my dream and win the round that way. So as you play solo, you need to be able to improvise and adapt to whatever your teammates are doing. In another round, in the prep phase, when I see opponents having Valkyrie and Echo, I know it's time to switch to IQ. When you see such defenders, having IQ on your team makes a huge difference, since your opponents want to rely on information, and you will be able to deny that as soon as possible. IQ is also a very good choice when you can approach the site vertically, from either above or below. As you can see, as soon as I enter the map below the area around the bomb site, I can spot the Valk cam and get rid of it through the wooden floor. The same thing happens with the magnet next to it. Yeah, you can get an angle from the piano on the study doorway. I missed my shots there because I'm bad and I was surprised. I didn't I didn't know that earlier. But I'm definitely trying these holes next time. For the trophy statue site, use this keeper barrier to block off most of the astro from the astro window. I'm already getting used to the barbed wire on smoke, but honestly I forgot to switch to a shield so I decided to hold the freezer on Oregon with smoke. I'm using a shotgun to open all holes on site and now I can hold the freezer. Barbed wire on stairs will allow me to hear any attacker and attack them with my shotgun from a very close range. I barricade the freezer doorway because I can now get this angle from below the barricade onto the zigzag hallway. When attacking the top floor site on Oregon, you probably often encounter the spawn peak from the master doorway. I'm lucky enough to spot it now from my drone, and I'll show you how to always win that fight. When you spawn, go past the white van, but crouch slowly behind the police car. You'll be able to see the defender through two glass layers, with a single one tap make him regret spawn peaking for the rest of his life. In that game, I realized having a drone skin is pretty beneficial. When I have a unique drone skin and I lose my drone to Mozzie, whenever I see it driving, I can instantly try to shoot it. I know now it's Mozzie's drone, so I don't need to try to ping it or see the red light. I can distinguish it by the skin. And that is all for episode 3. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and see ya.